My name is Wout Nierhoff. I'm the CEO of Eyes and Ears of Europe, which is the association for the design, promotion and marketing of audiovisual media in Europe. Um, I'm also Secretary General of the European Council for the Design, Promotion and Marketing of Audiovisual Media and um, more or less to, to um, take over the staff from, from Mr. Gina. Gina? Gina? Um, we're, we're in the business of audiovisual communications design, which can include print and paper and classic media forms, but um, our main focus is television, is radio, is film, it's uh, all about advertising, sports and audiovisual communications via handhelds as well as the internet, be it stationary or mobile. Um, this means, with regard to newspapers, I brought something along for you because we're talking about newspapers, 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 because there was an interesting um, advert in the, uh, in the uh, Le Soir issue of today, and it says something uh, really uh, truthful. Aujourd'hui, tout le monde doit s'adapter. Uh, today, uh, the, uh, all the world has to adapt. Uh, to whatever. I just passed this around because maybe this advert is interesting for you. I brought three issues and maybe it's good for a change that you get something in your hands. And with just PowerPoints. Can I pass this on to you? Um, somebody might ask why are you here? Why are you invited to this panel? I don't know. Maybe uh, because I went to a reform school when I was very young. <laughs> and I decided to leave reform school at the age of eight. <laughs> and, um, because, uh, and that's something that has to do with creativity and innovation. The problem with creativity and innovation is, and I mean, as far as I understood, this is the question of the panel, uh, how to get results. And the thing is, you only get results when you learn certain methods uh, that you create by yourself, or you can adapt methods from other people, get creative techniques, or things like that. Um, to Take again the step from Mr. Gina. Uh, the difference of eyes and ears of Europe as a professional organization compared to a consultancy is that uh, we think it's not good that our member organizations like television stations, radio stations, film producers, um, internet producers, internet advertisers, mobile operators, uh, that they just buy consultant time but they, they learn to develop into a learning organization because we believe this is something that is uh, very important in order to reinvent the company all the time. Uh, second point is um, a lot of people here talk about newspaper companies on the one side and television on the other side and uh, that's very close to the classic media channels like you did, uh, you learned, you have been trained as a newspaper journalist and you stick with the newspaper until you die. You've learned to produce a television show and you stick with it until you die. You've learned to produce something on the internet and you do it until you die. I mean, today digitization is all about that uh, you have a media range, a whole media range of these different options and that in uh, publishing houses, at least in Germany, where usually publishing houses are very conservative, and they are not really into the innovating business, or they haven't been for a long time. They have new concepts with regard to the editorial body, which is that uh, nobody is going to be an editor anymore, but to be a producer that produces, ideally for all these different media channels, because newspaper publishers today won't know whether they're going to be an internet company tomorrow, or a television producing company, or whatever. So I think it's better uh, to have in mind that the challenge uh, kind of posed by, by the digitization is that today there is no newspaper company, today there is no television station, but there are media communications companies and they compete um, in different segments, um, content-wise as well as distribution-wise, they compete for the same audience. The clue to that, in, from my point of view, is that um, one thing uh, is very important. Mr. Gina said, if you want to wreck your paper, you have to ignore, or something like that, uh, you have to ignore your customers, you have to ignore your readers. Or, what was the formulation, Mr. Gina? How did you tell it? One of the statements you had. Ignore the reader, something like that? Yeah, insult the reader. It's even going further. Um, the thing is, if you don't want to insult somebody, you need to know something about that person. 
you know all because many of you are in the media business that in mass media it's very difficult to know everybody you talk to. Yeah? Yeah? It's very difficult. So what is the clue uh, that has been invented uh, to be kind of the off-sender of a certain set of values and thereby a certain form of communication as well as addressing a certain audience, be it a niche audience or a mass audience? It's the brand. It's all about branding. And branding is important whether you are a newspaper publisher today or a television station. Brand is the essential thing. And I think that as a, as a kind of fundament for discussing innovation and creativity, it's very important to analyze where you are strategically positioned with your brand, be it a personal brand as a blogger, be it a more established brand in a uh, traditional newspaper publisher house or in a television station. So my, my statement here with regard to the discussion is it's not about future of media and communications and journalism. It's not about editing. It's not about reporting. It's not about research, but it's all about look and feel. Look and what? Look and feel. Look and feel.